really excited to work with Safe Passage when they came to us with this opportunity because it really fits well with the mission of the Pick Museum of Anthropology, which is to inspire activism for social justice. My hope is that this exhibit changes our community's response to be able to support survivors where they're at. Sexual violence is a traumatic event on an individual. Sometimes people feel afraid and will never be able to share or they feel threatened to come forward and say something. I've had people come up to me and tell me, well, when I was young, we didn't talk about these kind of things, so I never came forward. Or the younger kids tell me, well, I was told that I wouldn't be believed and I was scared to come forward. I want in the future for those conversations to change. I want people to tell me, we talk about these issues in our community, I felt safe coming forward. Or I feel safe now. Or when I did come forward, I was believed. I think that's the number one goal and I think that should be a goal everyone should work towards. So doing an exhibit like this with Safe Passage, we call it community curating in the museum setting, is a really unique opportunity because it allows us to work with people who haven't necessarily done exhibits before and we get to bring our skills to the table to translate their ideas into an exhibition. This is a survivor-created art exhibit. We created a platform for their voice. This is their message to the community and that is empowering to me. I hope that this exhibit will help people understand a little bit more about sexual assault and sexual abuse, uh, especially what it is like to be someone who has experienced that in our society. Some of the clothes and items that we have on display are actual clothes that people wore when they experienced their abuse. It's really powerful to walk around and see that, no, it wasn't what they were wearing, that they didn't ask for it. These ways that we try and minimize and deny what people have experienced, it really puts up a barrier between, you know, someone when they are disclosing their abuse to someone else. So we know women ages 18 to 24, specifically those enrolled in a college or university, are at the highest risk of sexual violence compared to the general public. So we wanted that specific demographic to know that we're here for them as they walk through these halls of NIU every single day. As a counselor, I partner with survivors of sexual assault and sexual abuse, and I want to help them feel more comfortable in their own skin. Part of that healing process is for them to practice self-compassion and rebuild healthy identities and that's really challenging when our culture victim blames. It's never the victim's fault for sexual assault or sexual abuse. It's an assault against an individual. It takes a lot of strength and courage for someone to come forward with their story, especially with how our society doesn't always respond well to a story like sexual assault or sexual abuse. So every exhibit that you see here at this museum, I hope, drives home just how strong survivors really are. The installation for this exhibit was especially difficult because as we're handling each of the individual uh, articles of clothing, the artwork, the mannequins, we realize that these are individuals that they represent and the moments of assault that they have experienced. This particular exhibit is really forcing you to take a hard look at what is going on within our community. This is not something that's happening, you know, states away. This is not something that's happening in a totally different city. This is happening in DeKalb and in Sycamore. And so as you're going through this exhibit, you're really faced with that. You're forced to talk about these issues and start to engage with them. And I think that is going to be the greatest impact for this exhibit within the community and in challenging ourselves to say, you know what, this is happening. We're no longer gonna turn the other way. We're going to start to be advocates and to assist those that need our assistance to believe survivors and to help move us into a community that no longer allows this to happen and fights against it. And when their violence is minimized and denied and they've been shamed and blamed, Many people say that secondary victimization is worse than the original assault that occurred. We need to become a community that calls out assault for what it is and rallies around our survivors to show that we believe them and not just believe them but support them for the resources and the healing that they need. 
When someone comes up to you and tells you that they have been sexually assaulted or they've been raped, start by believing that person. We created this exhibit because so often survivors are asked, well, what were you wearing? Why were you at that party? They place so much blame on survivors of sexual assault when we know it's not their fault. There's really a range of emotions that clients go through when they face sexual assault or sexual abuse and that really no emotion is incorrect. We go from extreme depression to anxiety to anger. Um, even sometimes clients want revenge of some sort and everything is totally valid uh, to an experience that they've had and often it's been minimized through the most unusual sources like friends, family, loved ones, people who are supposed to be there to support you but our society doesn't know enough about sexual assault in the general population to know how to respond when someone comes forward with something like this. It is never the survivor's fault. We need to change the system and we know that at Safe Passage we can't be that only platform. So we're grateful to partner with NIU's Pick Museum of Anthropology to put a dent into the problem, to create a safer community, to raise awareness, to educate, to create a new culture, and to offer hope and inspiration. One of the things that I hope that visitors to this exhibit get out of it is to be aware um, that there are survivors all around them. A lot of the people that they come into contact with on a regular basis are also victims of uh, sexual violence and sexual abuse so that they might not be aware of it. There are so many things people can do to help create a safer environment for sexual assault survivors and their families. But the most important thing and my biggest piece of advice is to start by believing. When someone tells you they were sexually assaulted, Tell them, I believe you, I'm sorry that happened, what can I do to support you? For myself personally, like, I didn't know a lot about sexual abuse or sexual assault prior to working at Safe Passage. It kind of seemed like it almost existed in this bubble. And until that bubble is burst for you, um, you're kind of in the dark about it. And I think that's why I really like Swept Under the Rug because it really is swept under the rug. Like we don't talk about sexual abuse, we don't talk about sexual assault, and having an exhibit like this really brings it to the forefront and can maybe help educate some people who, just like me, were in the dark about it. I learned from my clients' experiences that I became instantly aware that I entered the most intimate, traumatic histories of their sexual assault and sexual abuse. I sat with the artist of these survivor-created exhibits as they recalled and portrayed the narratives of their sexual assault and abuse. And those memories, whether they were from last year or decades ago, still remain painful. What was challenging to me was sitting with my emotions as the pieces started coming together. You know, at one point I had all of the mannequins in my office and all of the clothing, which a lot of them are children's clothing. And I think just sitting with those emotions and knowing that sexual assault still happens every single day and it still affects so many people all throughout their lives was really hard. So I'm hoping that survivors will come in here and feel encouraged to step forward and find that place of healing that they need. I hope that individuals that come in here that maybe didn't understand the way that their reactions to things are so hurtful and re-traumatizing that they start to reevaluate that and that they themselves start to look a little bit deeper and start to interact with survivors in a more positive way and to start to fight within our community to put an end to these issues. The most challenging thing with creating an exhibit like this is having to deal up front with the triggers of a client. Building something like this, it's not easy. <laughs> Our clients have to deal with and manage a thousand different triggers that are coming at them, memories of the abuse, thoughts, feelings, emotions, and it can be really raw for them to put this together. And with that, there were a lot of clients who didn't participate as well because they weren't ready, they weren't at that point to yet. And that's not to say that their voices don't matter, that their experience doesn't matter. They are every much as part of this exhibit as everyone else. They just aren't at the point to share that with someone else yet. Everyone is in a different place in their journey, and for some, it's triggering as they are reminded of the emotions of that original abuse that occurred. For others, 
there's a small sense of justice as they have an opportunity to call out the crimes against them. I think it's important to know that if if you have come through this exhibit or you're watching this video and you feel triggered or you feel emotional like I did, please know that you're not alone. This is incredibly hard to walk through. We know that one in four girls and one in six boys will experience sexual assault before they turn 18. So it is something that affects so, so many of us. So if you do feel triggered or you feel emotional, please know that you don't have to go through that alone. Places like Safe Passage are here to talk you through that. One of the things that we're seeing already with this exhibit is that it's creating a safe space for people to come together with loved ones and have discussions about how sexual violence has impacted their lives. I hope that we become a community that listens, believes, supports, honors the vulnerability of a survivor's story, practices confidentiality of their histories, educates ourselves on what it's like for a survivor in their healing journey. So please know that places like Safe Passage exist for those in DeKalb County or any neighboring county. Safe Passage provides free and confidential services to men, women, and children, no matter the age, gender, or sexuality, or no matter the time of abuse. You can call Safe Passage for free and confidential services at 815-756-5228. If you aren't local to DeKalb County and you need to find an advocate in your area, please know that the National Sexual Assault Hotline exists. That number is 1-800-656-4673. Please know that you are not alone. I hope as a community that we can change from victim blaming to survivor believing.